For those of you who already know, 3D printing still doesn't just deal with 3D printers. We also have CNC's and laser cutters as well. Today, we're going to cover a topic on the CNC side. More specifically, this topic is related to if you want to build your own custom CNC. And what I've got here on the table is mostly everything you will need to be able to do this. To list off the main components of this build, we will be needing a power supply, a stepper motor driver, an Arduino with a CNC shield, a breakout board, as well as the stepper motor itself. And to drive all of these, you will need a USB A to B cable and then your laptop or computer of choice, as well as a software like CNC JS, Easel, or any other CNC softwares you can find. With the introductions out of the way, let's get to how to properly connect your stepper motor, stepper motor driver, and your CNC shield. So the first thing we're going to have to do is connect our power supply. For this, you will have to create yourself a three point plug with a three core shielded cable so that you can connect it to the power supply on the correct spots. I will show you how to do this as well. Depending on which power supply you are using, this layout may differ a little bit. Keep in mind as well that we are using a 48 volt power supply. That will be important later on. You can either use a 24 volt or a 48 volt. If you're using a 48 volt, there's one extra step that we will have to do, which I will go over in, in a moment. First things first, as you can see on the right hand side here, we have live, neutral and ground. That little symbol there means ground. So all you have to do is correspond the wires from your plug to the wires over here. Live goes to live, neutral goes to neutral, and ground goes to ground. We'll be using our uh, little handy dandy little screwdriver set, which we do sell on 3dprintingstore.co.za if you want to go check it out yourself. A little tip that I have for connecting these wires is that if you can, rather than twisting them, you can split them into two separate groupings of wire and just kind of bend them around to make a little bit of a hook like so, because that can then go around. You can also just twist these now to make sure that they don't split off from each other. And that can go around the screw over here so that you can be sure to have a lot of surface area to hold the wires in place. So they won't just slip out from a slight tug. Make sure if you move them around like that, it will not come loose. The, then you can move on to the next wire. Once you are done with that, you can plug this guy in to a wall socket just to make sure that it works. Be sure that your cables are correct before doing that because you can blow your power supply if any of your cables have been switched around. Next thing we'll do is move on to our Arduino CNC shield and breakout board composition. Basically how this is going to work is that your Arduino is going to be your controller board that saves your firmware, which is going to be needed for driving the stepper motor. The CNC shield is where your stepper motor driver is going to be connected to as well as where your power is going to be connected to as well. There will be a USB cable going into the Arduino which will power this as well but that goes to your computer so you don't have to worry about that for now. Very very important thing. This input here can only take up to from 12 to 36 volts and remember how I said about the 48 volt power supply? So this is where this guy comes in. This is only necessary if you have a 48 volt power supply. This is a step down converter. So what we'll be doing is we'll taking the 48 volts and then stepping it down to 24 volts to go into here. But like I said, if you already have a 24 volt power supply, you don't need to worry about that. Now, for the connection of the Arduino to the CNC shield, you'll see that you have a row on both sides of female pin connectors. And then you have two rows on the bottom of the CNC shield as well. They can only fit in on one way where all the pins are connected. So you just have to line the last row of the CNC shield up with the last row of the Arduino. If that is done, you can just apply pressure on both sides to make sure that they slot in all the way. If you were to move it up one row, you will see that some of the things don't line up properly. So there you can see there is now a pin slipped in between the rows and there the pins don't even it can't even slip in between so you literally cannot unless you force it you cannot get the pins all the way down into the Arduino so just line it up make sure that the last rows are lined up and then apply pressure there you go your CNC shield and Arduino is now connected next thing would be your breakout board 
Now here comes a very, very important thing that a lot of people make a mistake on, because this guy can fit in, in both ways, uh, flipped around, upside down, or right side up. You'll see that there are a bunch of red, these red pins here, and then these yellow pins as well. The yellow pins is your Z, Y, and X axis, which we will be using for this. Uh, you can plug it into either or. We will be using the Z axis for this video. Now on here, if I can bring it in a little bit closer, you'll see right there, is an EN, which stands for an able. Underneath of the breakout board, there is also an EN, which is sometimes really, really hard to see. So you can see that top right pin is our EN. It is a little bit hidden underneath the plastic shrouding of the pin. So yeah, uh, sometimes you won't be able to see it. So just take a good long look and make sure there should be only one that looks kind of like it. So what we'll do is we'll line up that the EN on the breakout board with the EN on the shield as well. And just slide it in and plug it in. So there we go. We now have our breakout board also connected. The breakout board comes with cabling, four point JSC connection, which goes to four uncut wires, it usually has points on the end there, but I just cut them for the sake of the video. Another important part here is that the colors of the pins versus their outputs are not universal. Depending on your manufacturer, they can maybe switch around the colors on some of these pins. So you have to just check on your breakout board, which you can see right there. Each pin has a specific name. So you just have to, when you plug in your JST connector now here, There we go. Make sure that you are now taking notes of which cable goes to where. So ground is red, direction is black, step is blue, and enable is green. In this case, we will not be using enable, so we'll be cutting it down and using it as a spare wire so we can use it for different applications like power connection and bridging, which we'll be getting to now. Now that we have our controller board basically all the way set up, we now can move on to connecting it to our stepper motor driver. The stepper motor driver we will be using today is the DM542, which can take up to 48 volts of power. It has a maximum amperage output of 4.2 amps. It has switches on the bottom here, which we will be using to set the amperage and micro-stepping. Micro-stepping, which has a table here for a better reference on what to set it to, is up to your personal use. Whatever your application for your machine is, that is where you'll be getting down to these micro-steps. As you can see there on the top of the stepper motor driver, we have a bunch of our listed pins, and these are what we're going to be using for that breakout board cables. Quick rundown is the top one is the power and alarms. If the green light's on, it means that you have power to your stepper motor driver. If it's a red light, that means there's something wrong. It might be under voltage, it might be that one of the pins might have blown, etc. etc. The top one is pulse or yeah, P U L. It can also say step on certain stepper motor drivers. This one spe uh, specifically just say pulse. We will be connecting our step cable to the pulse plus. Pulse negative is where our ground cable will be going to and we will be bridging the pulse negative with the direction negative as well, which I'll show you in a moment. Direction positive is where our direction cable will go to. Then enable is something we're not going to be using for this specifically. What enable does is en it enables you to be able to turn off your stepper motor when the power to your machine is still on. In most cases, if your machine is off, your stepper motor is off, but if you want that functionality of being able to turn the stepper motor off whilst the machine is running, then you will be using enable as well. So let's start from the top to the bottom on the stepper motor driver. So the first thing we're going to be looking for is our pulse or step cable. In this case, our step cable is our blue cable. Trim off a little bit from the top here, just enough for it to be able to grab on. We can actually do a little bit more, there we go. So that's about a correct amount of cabling that would be needed for most applications. You just slightly unscrew the top here, make sure that it is open all the way. You can see there's a metal plate there. Don't go underneath it, like don't put it in underneath over there. Put it in between the top clamp, which is uh, not visible at the current moment with this one but there is a top clamp that will be coming down when the screw goes. So put it above this uh, metal plate at the bottom here. Put it in, just hold it in place with one of your fingers and tie down the screw. Just enough to where it is grabbing onto the cable. Next thing we're looking at is pulse negative and direction negative. So as I've said before, we are not using our 
an able cable right now. So either you can cut off the entire cable or just cut off a section of it. What you need is about two centimeters to three centimeters worth of cable. So that is what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna take some of this and then cut off about that length of cable. We'll be then stripping both sides because we will be needing this for a bridge. So for now, I'm just gonna put on the direction one first. This one doesn't have a second cable going in. In pulse negative, there will be a second cable going in. So um, we can do this one for now, just to have it grabbing onto something as well so that the cable also doesn't just fall when you try and put it into pulse negative. And the other cable that goes into pulse negative would be your ground cable, which is our red cable in this case. So that you can just slide right above the bridging cable. Make sure to hold them in place and use your screwdriver just to tighten it up. I'm just gonna lengthen this guy a little bit because it is a bit short. <laughs> I just noticed struggling to get it all the way in. There we go. I think if we tug on it, yeah. The cables are now finally secure, so we should be good. So just a quick look on exactly what we did there. So you can see this green cable is bridging from pause negative to direction negative, and the red cable is also in the same socket which is ground as the pulse negative. So then we can move on to our next cable. We will be taking our direction positive cable and putting it in to the direction positive slot on the stepper motor. And there we have it. Our stepper motor driver is now connected fully with our CNC shield from the brake card board. This is a little bit of how it would look like. You can see and make sure that your cables are in the proper slots. The next thing we can do is to connect our stepper motor. The stepper motor can either come with a connection, a uh, JST connection with cables, making it a little bit more modular, or it can come like this one where the cables are permanent on the stepper motor itself. We need to find the pairings of these cables because as you can see at the bottom here on the stepper motor driver, there is an A group and a B group. How you find your groupings is by testing the shaft. If none of your cables are being bridged, you can turn this shaft relatively easily. It can turn with very minimal resistance if there is no bridging. How we are going to find our groupings is by taking these cables and bridging two of them at a time and seeing if there is any uh, resistance that comes here. So let me quickly do that. It will be just touching the tips to bridge them, then try and turn it. You can even hear a slight clicking when you turn it. So these two, the black and green, are definitely a pairing. Just for an example, I'm gonna take the black and, oh sorry, the green and the blue and bridge them as well to see if anything happens. They shouldn't because they are definitely not a pair. So if we take the green and blue and bridge them as well and try and turn it, you can see it turns without any resistance. So now we know green and black and red and blue are pairs. This will be our A and B pairing. We will then be taking our green and black and then putting them either into A positive or A negative or B positive, B negative, either or, but the pairings have to be either A or B. So we'll be taking the black and green and putting them into A. Make sure A is the third one from the top the other two are for the power, which we'll be getting to in a moment as well. There we go, those two are good. So then we can move on to our blue and red as well. So then we'll to put our blue in B positive and our red into B negative. Give them a light tug to see if they are properly secured. And there we go. Also give enough wire when you are trimming the wires from the tips so that they have a definite connection when they touch here because you don't want to be clamping the plastic because the plastic will still insulate it and it, will, it won't work. That is our connections, every connection we need except for the power. So let's move on to the power. And for that, we'll start with the CNC shield and Arduino. As I've shown before, the CNC shield Arduino can take up to 12 to 36 volts of power. And we know that our power supply here is a 48 volt power supply. So that is where our step-down converter comes in. Now I've already soldered on the step-down converter. You will be needing to solder. The step-down converter has a basic in positive and in negative, as well as an out positive and out negative. 
the in is from the power supply to the step down converter and the out is from the step down converter to your CNC shield. How to set the voltage, you'll need a multimeter for that, but this little pin over here is to set the voltage output on the step down converter. So when you plug it in to the power supply and turn it on, you just have to connect these two to a multimeter's prods and turn this with a screwdriver just to, with a flathead screwdriver, just to get it to 24 volts. And once you're done, you can uh, then plug it in to your CNC shield. Once again, be mindful of where your positive and negative is. So our green is our negative and the red is our positive. On the power supply as well, it has three positives for this one specifically and three negatives. We will be plugging the red into one of the positives and the green into one of the negatives. And similarly, we will be taking the positive and the negative from the step down converter after setting the voltage, of course, and then plugging this into the corresponding negative and positive on the CNC shield as well. So you can see on the CNC shield there, there is a negative and a positive. So once again, try and solder these wires so that they correspond. So green, both for negatives and red for both for positives. So we'll take the negative again and put it in the negative here. For this, you'll need a Phillips head instead of the flat. Give them a light tug just to be sure that they are in place. So that should be the power to our CNC shield done. So now we can move on to the power for our stepper motor driver. For the stepper motor driver, we don't have a positive and a negative, but we have a positive and a ground, which is going to be our negative. Get yourself a little bit of extra wiring. The length of this cable is also specific to your needs. If you need it to go a long way, then you need a longer cable. Add one to the positive and one to the negative on the power supply and to the stepper motor as well. Once again, try and keep green to negative, red to positive. Give them once again a good tug on both the power supply and the stepper motor. And with that, everything should be all set up. For the moment of truth, we will be putting it on a test bench and then plugging it in to see that everything works. Let's get to it. So here we have our little test bench up. So from the power supply, we have a negative and a positive going to the step down converter, which takes 48 volts and then converts it down to 24 volts which has a positive and negative going to the correct corresponding ports on the CNC shield here as well. We then have another positive and negative going to the stepper motor driver, which also goes into the corresponding ports. Remember, once again, use a red cable for positive, green for negative or whichever cable, but keep them consistent. Then we can have a look at our cabling from the stepper motor driver. We have our ground going into the pulse negative, which is then bridged to the direction negative as well. Then we have our direction, which is the black cable going into direction positive on the stepper motor driver. Then we have our blue cable, which is our step going into pulse positive. So this can either say pulse positive, or it can also possibly say uh, step positive as well. Same with uh, pulse negative. It can either be step positive and step negative, or pulse positive or pulse negative, depending on your driver. Then we look at the bottom cables here. We have our four stepper motor cables going into the A positive and negative and B positive and negative. Once again, I did show you how to find the groupings touch them for and feel for resistance. As soon as there is resistance, then you know that those two are definitely pairs. So you then pair them up by A or B. Let us quickly plug this guy in. Now from the other side, we can also see on the stepper motor itself, there is only a green light. If the red light is on, there might be a problem with your stepper motor driver or with your power supply. There's also now a USB cable that is plugged into a laptop on the side here. And we can now feel, now that there is power, we cannot turn the stepper motor at all. You can try as you might, you will not be able to turn the stepper motor. That means that there is power successfully driving towards it. So, last thing we can do is just quickly see if everything is working. The motor is moving in a clockwise rotation. If you wanted to switch these over, first thing you'll have to do is plug out your entire system, make sure there's no power running through it. And there are two ways to change the direction of the motor. Either you can do it through your software, that is something I will not be covering right now. It is also dependent on the software that you are using. 
Otherwise, what you can do is just take one of the groupings of the cables that go into the stepper motor. We'll be just taking a B for now, so the red and blue cable. Loosen them again and just swap the orientation of them. So it was blue in the B minus and red in the B positive. Now we just switch them over to be blue in the B positive and red in the B negative. After that's done, you can now turn on the power again and run it again. Now we should see the motor spinning anti-clockwise. There we go. If you were to change both the poles of the A ports and the B ports, it would be like a double negative, which turns to a positive, so it will then end up being or spinning in the same rotation uh, as it did before changing anything. So you only want to do that on one of them, which is either A or B, it doesn't matter which one. But yeah, that is the quick and hopefully painless explanation on how to wire your CNC shield to your stepper motor to your stepper motor driver. I hope that this was informative and if you have any more questions about certain aspects of this diagram of this wiring, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And if you liked the video, why not consider subscribing and maybe leaving a like. Thank you and see you in the next video.